Hello, what's up guys? I'm on from Pez Smart Page here. Welcome sa open bagong episode. Shout out to all the podcast listeners as well. I appreciate you all. Today, let's talk about call financial. Check natin yung kanilang performance, yung financial performance sa 2022. So, quick overview. Call Financial Group is a publicly listed company sa Philippine Stock Exchange or PSE. They were incorporated noong August 16, 1999 for a singular purpose to help every Filipino achieve a richer life. So basically, they're a stock broker, online stock broker. So nag-launch sila ng kanilang trading platform, online trading platform back in 20, uh, 2001. So they offer real-time market information and direct market access while providing the comprehensive stock market research and analysis necessary for its clients to make well-informed investment decisions. So if you check and if meron kayong account sa call and if you check yung kanilang fundamental analysis, it's really helpful. Maganda insights doon, maganda research. You can also check their technical analysis and technical indicators sa call financial then if you are a day trader or like swing trader. So, in Call Financial is a full-service online broker, whether the clients are individual investors or institutional, wherever they may fall on the spectrum of net worth, investing experience, or stages of life. Call provides them with the tools and guidance necessary to make informed investments. Call's tools such as its online platform and other online services have greatly facilitated access to the market for many Filipinos. And then search then yung kanilang yung kanilang user account or like you can say daily active user like yung mga nag-open na ako na nag-search nung, nung 2020 nung start yung pandemic kasi like a lot of people they're like looking for hobbies na pwede lang gawin or pagkakitaan while at home since mas marami silang free time since most of us hindi nagpupunta sa office or uh, hindi kailangan magpunta physically sa work so yeah a lot of people they they took up yung kumbaga ha- hobby to invest or like trade in stocks so call also brings with an easy reach the expertise of its professionals through regular research reports again nasabi natin earlier technical guides in addition to the edu- educational support that it provides through its webinars online market briefings and social media outreach one of the side effects of the pandemic has been to encourage the development of remote and scalable systems that allow the parent company to reach and assist more Filipinos in line with its advocacy. And before it's all financial, when I was just starting to research mga brokers, it was back in, I think, 2013, 2014. I was still in college. And meron silang capital requirement para mapag-open ka ng account. Previously, it was 25k. And then, I believe, mukaba siya to like 10K and then eventually 5K and then ngayon wala na. <laughs> you can open an account kahit wala pang funding. Although, syempre, hindi ka pwede mag-trade. But you can still access the website. Although, syempre, may mga perks if mas mataas yung capital na ipapasok mo. Like, may mga libreng webinars, may mga libreng like, hindi naman consultation, but like, premium review or research about the market, about your particular stock. So, yun yung may perks, syempre, kapag sa taas yung capital mo. But yeah, it's more than enough if, like, for example, mag-start ka pa lang like, less than 5k, less than 10k yung capital mo. Then, you can use a lot of their tools dun sa kanilang website. So, yan, para makita nyo yung kanilang financial report, you can go to PSC Edge, search for call, Type nyo lang ito dito. Lalabas na siya. <clears throat> It'll be uh, rerouted here. And then you can go to financial reports. Ito yung mas simple na presentation ng financial reports. Almost lahat naman ito ang dito na. So you can, you can see their total assets, liabilities, income statement, balance sheet, and then yung quarterly report. So ito na una. This is the annual report. And then quarterly And if we check yung kanilang income statement, 2021, in comparison to 2022, lumit yung kanilang gross revenue. So, from from 1.3 billion pesos to 835 million pesos. 
So that's down around 36.8%. So same thing sa kanilang net income. Let's try to calculate kung ano yung difference sa kanilang net income after taxes. This was from 2021. And then this one is from 2022. So down yan 58.34%. So that is quite a lot. And kapag ka chinek nyo yung mismong yung comprehensive na annual report. So, kiklik nyo lang to. Then, you can download it. So, dito, makikita nyo na rin yung mas detailed. But, if you want, like, the explanation and yung reasoning behind, like, for example, this one, sa pag-decrease sa revenue and pag-decrease ng net income, you can download this one. So, download yung PDF file and you can read or, like, skim through the annual report. So, dito, explain natin ng konti kung bakit nangyari yun. But, before that, let's check muna yung kung saan ba nagagaling or kung saan nagde-derive ng revenue itong call financial. So, most of the revenues generated sa call financial sa Philippine operations kasi meron din silang subsidiary na broker din sa Hong Kong. So, yung una commission generated from stock trades. So, syempre may cut sila pagka uh, nagbenta and may pumili ng mga, ng mga stocks na tinitrade dun sa kanilang platform. Interest income from margin financing. Trail fees arising from its fund distribution business. And interest income made from short-term placements. So, call also derives revenue from commissions earned by its stock brokerage business in Hong Kong through its fully owned subsidiary call Hong Kong or call HK. Yung mga products and services sila. So, call financial takes pride in its array of value-driven products and services that are designed to prove its customers with an optimal investing experience. So, para silang investment products, securities, IPOs, fund offerings. They have margin lending, investment services, institutional business group, agency and advisor accounts. They also have ganilang tools and platforms, so they leverage the latest technology in its efforts to make it easier for the Filipino people to make informed investments in the stock market. So they have the online platform, and ito yung maganda, the mobile app is in the works. So the development of the initial Android and iOS versions of Call's new mobile application has been successfully completed, and both applications have received their respective cer certifications from the PSE or the Philippine Stock Exchange. The actual production implementation is expected by the second quarter of 2023, so that starts now, since the tapos time first quarter in 2023, nitong March. The mobile app has complete order and market data functionalities as well as access to calls charting facility to enable users to easily trade on the go as well as monitor the market and their portfolio. And I think it's about time. Say, wala pa talaga nag-offer ng maganda mobile app na pwede kang mag-invest or mag-trade ng Philippine stocks dito sa Philippines. So yeah, that's, that's pretty good na magkakaroon na ngayong 2023 and hopefully it will be a good app and hindi like babagal or like buggy or hindi user friendly but yeah yung yung platform naman ng call financial sa web it's UI is straightforward madaling mag trade madaling bumili ng stocks madaling magbenta madaling mag fund ang bilis mag reflect nung nung funds mo kapag ka nag deposit ka sa call financial and marami rin tinatanggap na mga mga bank accounts. So, yeah, again, hopefully, maganda yung maging mobile app nila. And then, their business strategy. So, nung one dyan, accessibility. Then, investor education. That's really good. That really aligns with what I wanted to do with this particular channel. With Pesha Smart Page. Market research reports and analysis so again sinabi ko sa inyo may mga fundamental analysis sila and reports sa call financial website and then customer value and convenience so pakita ko na rin sa inyo no, yung yung mga pwede nyo makuha or mabasa dito sa call financial para may visual din kayo so ito yung call financial so if you go to research and fundamentals may tanyo dito yung latest updates and pwede kayo mag search ng mga specific stocks if gusto nyong 
tingnan yung mga latest report nila about those stocks. So, sabi natin, Globe. So, GLO. Search lang natin yun. Then, click mo lang to. Yan, maglo-load na dito. Yung PDF file. Pwede, pwede mo rin download if you're in the go. Para ma-check mo din siya. Like, offline. Kahit wala kang internet access, you can read up dun sa mga reports. Dito sa Call Financial. So, yan, again, makikita nyo na, nyo na dito halos lahat ng mga reports sila. And... This is in chronological order naman. So, yung latest palagi may kita nyo dito. So, as you can see, yung latest sila was uh, April 5. And then, dito yung latest updates. So, ito yung mas, mas recent no, in comparison dito. So, ito yung kumbaga archive. So, yung latest sila was with Mond. And meron din silang rating dun sa mga stock kung kung buy ba, kung hold, or kung sell. But, of course, hindi nyo man kailangan palaging sundin to. Kasi, of course, meron silang sarili lang like method uh, when assessing yung fair value nung, nung isang stock. And then, pinapaita rin nila kung ano ba yung upside. No? For example, current price, bumili ka ngayon ng 9.33 na month. Then, fair value is around 10.8. Then, yeah, probably a lot of people will sell at this price point or even kung mag-11 man or even bago mag 10.80 pa yeah again hindi yan uh hindi yan absolute no so hindi mo kailangan palagi itong sundan but i think most of the time they're correct naman especially ngayon na nasa bearish phase pa rin tayo sa market since nasa quantitative tightening pa din and nasa high inflation rate environment tayo and high interest rate environment So, hindi hindi masyado maganda sa mga risk assets katulad ng stocks. Then yun, KPIs or Key Performance Indicators. Call is dedicated to optimizing profitability by efficiently utilizing its capital resources with the ultimate goal of enhancing shareholder value. To this end, Call consistently monitors and evaluates the effectiveness of its corporate activities and Key Performance Indicators or again KPIs to measure the success of its financial and operational strategies along with accompanying action plans. Presented below are some of the essential KPIs that Call utilizes for performance measurement. So in comparison to 2021 to 2022, your number of customer accounts sila grew from 489,154 to 516,247. And then yung revenues again, pumaba siya ng around 36.8% from 112.8 billion to around 105 so that is oh wait yeah i was wrong that was sorry about that that's customers net equity in revenues mobile from 1.3 billion to 835 million pesos in 2022 so in return average equity from 30 percent to 12.1 percent in 2022 And then calls client base still continue to grow despite global and local economy worries. With the number of customer accounts for the Philippine operations increased by 5.5% per- year on year. So, comparison yan from 2021 to 2022. Then yung revenue nga, it fell ng 36.8%. Yung decline word was largely due to the 55.9% year on year drop in commissions which accounted for more than half of the total revenues kasi yun yung main main source nila ng revenue yung commissions so pag wala masyadong no activity sa markets hindi masyadong nagte-trade yung mga customer sila then of course mas kokonte yung kanilang commissions the decline in revenues coupled with the highly leveraged nature of the stock brokerage business resulted to a steeper 58.2% drop in net income attributable to equity holders of the parent company to 244.05 million pesos. Consequently, return on average equity fell to 12.1% in 2022 from 30% nung 2021. Then we have the profitability ratio. So, return on assets nasa 2.0% yan. So, in good return on assets was actually 5%. So, that was back in 2021. So, bumaba yan to 2% nung 2022. Then, we have net profit margin sa 29.2%. That's still pretty good kasi 44.1% is really high 
kapag uh, net profit margin yung pinag-uusapan. If we talk about gross profit or gross revenue margin, around 50% is really good. But of course, that's that's really high, no? Kung i-compute natin yung gross gross revenue margin or gross profit margin ng ng call noong 2021 kasi net profit ng or net income is at 44.1%. So again, it's not really that bad yung kanilang net profit margin for 2022 but still it it fell down from 44.1% to 29.2%. Then we have solvency and liquidity ratios. Current ratio nila halos din naman nagbago from 1.14 to 1.10. A good current ratio is between 1.2 to 2. So, this means that the business has two times more current assets than liabilities to cover its debts. And then, we have debt-to-equity ratio. A good debt-to-equity ratio is around 2 to 2.5 in general. Kasi pagka nasa 5.5, medyo, medyo mataas na yun. And yung company, ibig sabihin na yung company, they rely on debt para ma-fuel yung kanilang operations. But it's not always it's not always bad, but it it just gives you an idea kung capital heavy ba yung operations ng isang company or kung like debt heavy ba. Like for example, sabi natin um, Aaron Company yon. Sobrang sobrang debt heavy and capital heavy para magfunction yung day to day ng airline business and kilang nila ng malaking capital para mag-move and mag-operate and maging functional yung business na yun. Like sabihin natin, for example, in comparison sa JME7, sobrang baba na lang yung debt nila and kayang i-fuel nung revenue nila, nung, nung, nung income nila every single year. Yung, for example, production ng show, kasi syempre meron silang ad revenue. Although, may, kahit medyo nag-slow down na yung ad revenue because of high interest rate and high inflation rate, Uh, they still make a lot of money last year. In, co- in comparison to 2021, medyo mas mwaba, but still, uh, it's really good. And again, hindi sila masyado nang utang and wala sila masyadong debt. And then, quick ratio naman, 1 to 1. So, 1 yung magandang quick ratio. So, that's pretty good. Nasa 1.0 pa rin sila. Then, lastly, check natin yung kailang revenues. So, yung consolidated revenues nga fell ng around 36.8%. To 835.98 million pesos. So despite the drop in revenues, yung cost of service nila, it still grew by 16.4% to 279.98 million pesos. So mas buwaba yung kanilang revenue, tumas ang konti yung expenses. So that's why mas lumit yung, yung kanilang net income. And then yung commissions... Uh, revenue, it fell by around 55.9% to 447 million pesos. This was largely due to the decline in the average daily value turnover and the PSE brought about by the poor performance of stock market. Trading volumes were also unusually high in the first quarter of 2021 due to the opportunity and popularity of speculative stocks which significantly benefited call given its focus on retail investors so this was the time na umakyat din yung S&P 500 yung Nasdaq yung mga US stocks and like stocks globally so sumabay din yung mga Philippine stocks and nagpeak nga nung April and nung November 2021 and same thing sa mga cryptocurrencies and another thing to point out tumas din yung kanilang cash on hand per se kasi since mas maganda yung binibigay na interest ng mga banko sa time deposits so mas marami silang kumbaga cash na deposits sa mga banks kasi kailangan ng liquidity ng mga banks lalo na ngayon na nagkaroon ng konting credit crunch and then uh, nagkakaroon din diba ng banking turmoil sa US so kung ba kailangan ma-regain yung confidence dito sa mga banks ito. Although itong call financial, they're taking advantage of the high interest nga na, in, na output ng mga, ng mga deposits na yun. So that's why, di ba, instead of like uh, betting on risk on assets, it's much better to go for those short to medium term na mga papers para, para mas ma-maximize nila yung kanilang capital. Then we have 
prospects for the future so near-term prospects so yung mga stock progress in the philippine stock market are expected to enjoy a better year in 2023 so emerging market stocks are currently in favor due to several reasons including china's exit from its zero covid policy and the m country's relatively faster gdp growth so last year uh yung gdp growth natin was still good but medyo mas naging conservative yung yung forecast for 2023 kasi nga there's a looming mild recession sa United States and if magkaroon sila ng mild recession then most probably we will also have a mild recession and then medium to long-term prospects naman the medium to long-term outlook for the Philippine market remains very attractive so yung economy natin and earnings of listed companies grew by faster pace than expected in 2022 due to the opening of the philippine economy from the pandemic and dust lockdowns this is expected to continue driven by the philippines favorable demographics the significant size of our resilient ofw remittances so that really is a big part of our gdp and your growth on gdp and the attractive growth prospects of our BPO sector. Again, that is a very big and import, important industry and sector then for the Philippines uh, GDP. Then the passage of the corporate recovery and tax incentives for enterprises bill in 2021 should improve the Philippines' competitiveness in attracting more foreign direct investments, helping create more jobs for Filipinos. So, para mas bumaba yung unemployment rate. Although still with all of this, we're still at a high inflation and high interest rate environment. And may lag effect din naman ito. So, hindi natin nararamdaman agad yung pag-raise ng interest rates ng BSP and ng US Fed. So, yung lag, it lasts for around 12 months to 18 months yung estimate. So, yung mga na interest rate last year, ngayon pa lang natin mararamdaman yun. And again, that's not really very good for for risk assets. Although again, it's a folly and it's a fool's errand to try and time the market perfectly every time. So, the best way to deploy capital pa rin is to peso cost average, PCA or dollar cost average. So, you just set a time when you'll be buying your assets particular stock particular crypto particular etf or particular index fund and you're gonna buy that asset every time uh regardless of the price so kahit matas yung price kahit mababa yung price you're just gonna buy it every single time dun sa sinat mo na oras so sabihin natin first monday of the month or like last friday of the month Depende sa'yo. Basta dapat regular and almost identical din yung capital na deploy mo. So, for example, every month, yung goal mo is to put up at least 5,000 pesos. Pwede siya mag-increase to like 10,000, 20,000. It really depends on your your savings rate. Or kung magkano savings mo and kaya mong invest every single month. So, yeah. But as long as you have a minimum and hindi ka nakakamiss, dun sa pagbili then you're pretty much good to go then lastly when it comes to dividends hindi ganun kalaki yung binibigyan na dividends ng call financial and you can ignore this dividend yield na 46, 43, and 38 percent kasi mali yung computation yan since nag stock split na itong call financial 1 is to 10 noong 2020 so ito yung mas accurate and it's closer to like 1.5 to 2 percent every year yung dividends sa binibigay ng call financial and yung growth din naman ng stock prices is not really that big but yeah uh, if you're looking for dividends specifically for the stocks that you're buying then you should probably look somewhere else other than call financial but you think na magandang business model and you think it's relatively safe to buy call financial then it might be the stock for you if you're looking for growth and capital appreciation sa medium to long term.
yung dividend payout ratio ng 2021 is quite decent, nasa 53%. Ng 2020, not so much, nasa 7% lang. And then previously, malaki din yung binibigay nila na na dividend payout ratio. For 2022, similar lang din, closer to 1.5 to 2% yung kanilang dividend yield for last year. Yung dividend payout ratio, hindi pa natin alam. Uh, we'll still have to check that sa kanilang annual report. Uh, I haven't seen it. But most most likely, update na rin yun ng BPA trade dito sa kanilang platform. And yeah, end na natin yung episode here guys. I hope na may natutunan kayo. And if you want kayo at end of this video, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Help me grow the channel by smashing the like button. That really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if you're new, don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. I upload new videos every single week. And if you pag like, twice even like every day sometimes but yeah you may follow me some on social media platforms go i'm on tiktok facebook instagram and twitter at m and psph and then another way to support the channel is through the youtube membership so you can click the link in the description to know more about it thanks again for watching and listening everyone stay safe i'll see you on the next episode always remember be passive smart